What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Um, I just wanted to go over my uh, PSA collection and obviously a couple Beckett. Um, we're going to do those first just to get those out of the way. <laughs> but um, uh, I mostly grade Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but if I find a good deal on Magic or whatever online, then I will uh, you know, pick it up. But that's why I have these Beckett cards because they're, they were like pretty much a steal. I pretty much stole them. So we're going to go do the Beckett first and then I have a couple sixes, sevens, eights, and then we'll save the tens for the last. So um, yeah, push these to the side and get started. We'll start off with the three Beckett. First one we got here is a revised fire breathing. It's a mint nine. All right, my cat came in, so I don't know where I left off, but pretty much I got these three cards for $30. I mainly bought them because I saw this. This is like one of my favorite cards in Magic the Gathering. It's in like every single deck that I have green in. Uh, Land War Elves. Uh, Mint 9. These are all three from Revised. And for $30, graded Beckett, you just can't beat that. Beat that. I mean, you're already... The guy already lost money from sending in them. I think if it's the same pricing as... Um, as PSA is, then they're 20 bucks a card. So, I mean, unless you do bulk, but either way, even if you do bulk, you're doing 10 bucks a card, so you're just breaking even. So, um, had to pick these up. Definitely a steal. Now moving into, the, the rest of the cards are all PSA. I have a 2002 uh, Duelist Soul Promo Exchange. This is a uh, six. This is one that I bought for super cheap. I don't remember exactly, but um, this card's awesome, and I mean, I couldn't pass up the price, so I ended up just picking it up. This is a 2003, the Falsebound Kingdom. By the way, these are like promo, like game promos, by the way. Um, Goblin Fan, just an awesome secret rare. Got this for cheap. I did not grade this one. And uh, yeah, just an awesome promo. I also bought this one as well. This is a uh, Unlimited Island, so 1993. Um, I, this is my favorite island from Magic the Gathering just because it's just gorgeous, gorgeous um, artwork on there. Um, picked it up, super cheap. I'm assuming it was around the $20, $30 range um, for an eight. Um, probably one of my favorite cards of all time. This is the one I remember the most as a kid. I picked, I actually bought this one. I didn't grade this one either. Um, Dark Duel Story Salamandra, PSA 8. It's just one of the most just beautiful cards. The artwork with the orange, oh my gosh, just amazing. Also bought this one. Uh, first edition uh, starter deck Pegasus, Relinquished. Relinquish is one of Yu-Gi-Oh's most iconic monsters. Obviously, Pegasus is uh, number one monster. Just a phenomenal looking card. I wish they did something else with the background to make the foil more, or to, to focus more on actual Relinquished, but they kind of just made it like a dark, but PSA 8. I think the last, oh no, I have a couple more PSA 8s. The, anything less than a 9, I just... I bought, I would, I don't send in cards that get less than an eight most of the time. Uh, we got a starter deck Kaiba Lord of D. I picked this up just because it's my favorite um, card from the Kaiba deck. Even more than the blue eyes, I don't know why. <laughs> but this just says, I, I think it's just because like I had a crap ton of these as a kid. Um, over blue eyes, so. Um, just great artwork, great foiling on it. PSA 8. We have another DDS, um, Acid Trap Hole, PSA 8. Just another good uh, secret rare. It's kind of almost like prismatic, almost. It's not like a normal secret rare. And the last PSA 8 we, I have is the 2002 Legend of Blue Eyes Mystical Elf. Um, this and Celtic Guardian, surprisingly, are probably one of my fate. Not, I wouldn't say most favorite, but like almost at the top of the list of Legend of Blue Eyes, even over most of the um, Ultra Rares, just because, I don't know, maybe I had a lot as a kid, but I just love these, this and Celtic Guardian. I still need to get a Celtic Guardian graded. I, 
think I have two in my recent submission. This card um, I sent in myself. This was like my first big pull in Magic the Gathering, like the first chase card that I wanted to get, like right when I got into Magic the Gathering. Um, I was chasing for this card and I finally pulled it, so I'm like, screw it, I'll grade it. I know exactly why this graded nine. I think there was a corner, yeah, this corner is whiting. Um, but I sent it in anyways, uh, just because I just wanted it slab, just to keep it preserved. Uh, chased this for a long time, two boxes, $500 later. And uh, yeah, <laughs> got my Chrome Mox. I don't know how much this is worth, but um, it's definitely up there. I think Raw is like $200 right now. So pretty good. Next up, I had like three of these, but I ended up selling a bunch of them because they just kept coming back as nines. <laughs> uh, PSA 9, Trihorn Dragon, the Seeker from Legend of Blue Eyes. Definitely an awesome foiling. The This is the reprint though, so the foiling pops a lot more than the original print. I want the original print, but Legend of Blue Eyes packs are just so expensive right now. Uh, this is another one that I picked up, like for like dumb cheap. I think it was, I think I spent like nine bucks on this. And this is actually a really expensive card because it's Trial of Hell, it's LOB first edition. And first edition was the only edition that, um, it was Trial of Hell. After that, when they printed the Unlimited of Legend of Blue Eyes, then they changed it to Trial of Nightmare. So this card definitely has a premium. Um, I was hoping to get, um, well, I didn't grade it, but I was hoping to get a PSA 10, but it was just so expensive. So I settled with a nine. And I think I looked over this at one point and yeah, like the left side here, it's whiting. So like, I wouldn't crack it out and try to get it as a 10. Sometimes if it's a strong nine, I'll crack it out and resend it, but I know exactly why this got a nine. If I resubbed it, it'll probably even get an eight. I don't even, it's like a very, very weak nine. And my last PSA nine, I actually picked this up for 25 bucks recently. Um, Curse of Dragon, PSA nine from Legend of Blue Eyes. Just an iconic card. Now we are getting into the big boys. My PSA 10 collection, not many, but definitely some hard hitters. We have, I'm gonna pull these to the side so you don't see them. The 2020 Mana Crypt from the Mystery Booster. I don't know why they put foil, but they did. It's not foil. <laughs> um, I pulled this myself. I just decided to get it graded and it came back at 10. I think um, when I checked last, I was the only one who had this as a PSA 10, so pop one. <laughs> um, but I'm assuming more people brought, uh, sent them in and got more 10s. I'd have to look that, look that up. We have a Spell Ruler Gem Mint 10 Blue Eyes Toon Dragon. This card looks amazing. This is the reprint and I pulled this myself. I'm pretty sure every single one, yeah, every single card as a 10 I pulled myself and sent in. Um, I really want the Magic Ruler one and especially the first edition, but I mean, they're just way too expensive right now. I'm talking like $4,000 for um, an MRL first edition PSA 10. It's nuts right now. Um, but this will do for now. This one I also pulled myself. This is original print, unlimited, not the reprint. Um, Magic Ruler Serpent Knight Dragon, gem in 10. And Jinzo, gem in 10 from Pharaoh Servant. I pulled this myself as well. And it is just a phenomenal card. This is like so many people's number one card. <laughs> Everyone loves Jinzo, you can't not like them. And my favorite PSA 10 out of all of them, Exodia the Forbidden One, PSA 10 from Legend of Blue Eyes. Definitely one of the most iconic cards that have ever been printed in Yu-Gi-Oh. Definitely a huge part of the anime. Everyone remembers that episode when he summoned Exodia and uh, Oh man, just such an iconic card. And that is pretty much it, guys. For now, I have a 64 card submission coming in probably in like six months because um, they're just taking so long on submissions. And I also have a seven card submission that should be coming within a month or two. So um, I'll be posting that as soon as I get it back, obviously. And... Um, 
Yeah, I'll, I'm gonna also do episodes of before I send in the cards and what I'm sending in. So I'll be doing that soon. I don't know when I'm gonna send in just because like, I mean, I guess I'll send them in the sooner rather than later just because they're gonna take a long time either way, but I'll be, I'll be posting that vid soon here. So um, thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic and all types of TCG videos.